lounge and sun. Welcome back to the Comic Lounge. My name's Ryan. And I'm Manny. And we are going to be talking about another Mark Miller book. The hype that we have, not just from uh, you know the big game that's coming out, having the interview with him, Ambassadors, the Nemesis Reload, everything he's been doing lately. So yeah. we've decided it's we like want the, to... the Mark Miller Renaissance. Yeah, so thing. we're... We're like deep into it. We have a lot of Mark Miller books planned, a lot of the Miller World stuff that we want to talk about. I wanted to talk about one that I feel isn't talked about that much, um, but it is going to be tied into big game, and that is Starlight, uh-huh. obviously by Mark Miller, and Goran Parlov is the artist. Um, kind of his take on Flash Buck Gordon, Rogers, Buck Rogers, Flash Gordon, Flash Gordon, Buck Gordon Rogers. a little, little yeah, mix yeah, like, of both. But yeah, so I'm you like know, the Earthman. You know, even even Adam Strange to an extent, which is the same idea, like an Earthman. You know, it's like an amalgamation of all of them to me, kind yeah. of. You know, but yeah. So it's you know, I'll just read the back real quick before we get into it. So it's forty years ago, Duke McQueen, which I love that name by the way. Yeah, uh, was a space hero who rescued a world from tyranny, but then he came home, got married, had kids, and grew into an old man with nothing but his memories until one night when an old sparkly rocket ship descended from the heavens and called him back for one final adventure. That is such a great, like, I couldn't have described it any better than what mm-hmm. that is. Uh, it's the it's perfect a, elevator a, a, pitch. Yes, I was going to say, like, that. that's, I mean, you pitch that as someone in Hollywood, that's a fucking blockbuster movie right there. Yeah, like, know? I don't like, know why this hasn't, like, to me, this is, like, the one that they should have adapted, like, early on. Like, yeah. obviously, like, this didn't exist when Wanted came out. This didn't exist when Kick-Ass came out. So those got adapted, and those are both great. Um, well, yeah. I didn't like wanted the movie that that much, but the yeah, comic yeah. book the was kick-ass good. Movie is great. Kick-ass movie is yeah. good. Uh, but yeah, this is one of actually this is one of my favorite books that he's done um, because I love this trope of the you know Earthman going and stuff. Yeah, like, I, Adam I love Strange it has always been a favorite character of mine. Not Buck Rogers, Flash Gordon. Like I haven't read a lot. Like I've a little before up. my time. Although the, the Flash Gordon movie with like the Queen soundtrack and all that, and like with uh, what's his name. Uh, Sam something that played that played uh that played uh Flash Gordon. That movie was like tangibly around in my childhood a lot. It wasn't like like as as you know as huge as like Star Wars or like even even Battlestar Galactica, but it, it was present. So like yeah, I grew up with the trope too. So I, I love it, you know. And it, it's it's a it's one of those ideas where you're like, man, I can't believe no one's thought of this before. It's like basically it's old man Flash Gordon, you know, like yeah. But that's Mark Miller, dude. He does stuff yeah, that dude. seems like. So, like such a no-brainer but he yeah. does it first you know and i love you know like this is like the this is the cover but this is the opening right we get the first three pages of him on this world and this queen who's like i love that she towers over him i don't yeah. know why but to me that was just like a nice little because he's he yeah. has like he has to stand on this like thing just and he's still not as tall as her but i love that she's like trying to get him to stay and it's like Man, that'd be like a hard thing to turn down. You know what I mean? Like, oh, yeah, to go home. But he's like, no, I got to get back to my wife. And then you open up, and he's old. It, yeah, said, like you know, his alarms going he off. Wakes up. And the first thing he does is light a fucking cigarette. You know, like. Yeah, there's something about this series of of panels with him in the shower. He's just brushing his teeth, looks at himself in the mirror. You know, after getting out of bed, putting his cigarette out into a fucking ashtray full of cigarette butts. What's he doing? He's getting ready to go to a funeral. And as you'll know, as you read, it's, you know, his wife has passed. And I love the kids. Like, they're like, this is what I really love, too. The kids are fighting over, like, well, fuck, who's he going to live with? Who's he going to yeah. take care of? I'm like, I can't take him. Like, I just got back with my with my lady. Like, we're trying to fix our relationship. Like, well, I can't. Like, I just got my office. Like, you know, like, all these different things. And yeah, because yeah. everyone in the world thinks he's lying. I mean, because he, he was an Air Force captain, I believe. And then, you know, he disappeared for a while. He came back and was telling everyone, like, ah, oh, had these adventures. And, you know, most people are going to think he's fucking crazy. Right. I mean, he's got no proof, right? Um, yeah. They don't believe him. And I think even at a certain point in the book, you know, he talks about his wife telling him that, she, you know, she believes him. But you have to think, like, does she really believe him or is she just saying it because she loves him and she just doesn't, you know, the whole world's kind of against him and thinks he's yeah. crazy. She doesn't want to be the person to make him think he's crazy. Um, but, yeah, like, I, I think that, you know, he's got he's got nothing left to lose kind of at this point. Right. Like he's by himself. His kids kind of don't want him. I, I love the flashbacks. You know, we'll get like a couple pages throughout like of him as a young man. And it's just 
I just love the art so much. And again, like a, a year later, right? Alarm's going off at the same time, 6.59 in the morning. And he's like going to the grocery store. He's getting some shit, right? These kids fucking come up and like make fun of him because he's the guy, like you said, he's the guy yeah. that like said, oh, he went to space. And like, oh, what? Is it true? They put a probe in Uranus? You know, like it's such a corny ass <laughs> joke, but it still makes me, even as I'm reading it, it, make, it makes me laugh. You know, then he's, again, he's like, living his life and we keep getting these like little glimpses right of him like uh, the art is beautiful there. man oh this, it is beautiful this, you know this there's there's like thing. a there's like a mobius like like a jeff darrow-ish kind of like like mostly mobius very like euro comics influence you know and it sucks too like so it's a year later right he's got a di- he makes this whole dinner for his fucking family and they all cancel they're you know like none of them are coming He's like, oh, you know, it's fine. It's no trouble at all. And like, then it pans to him standing in the rain out on his porch. And then this, these series of pages, dude, he's got his fucking outfit in a glass case. He's got all these newspaper clippings of, <laughs> of how people didn't believe him. Test pilot resigns after public ridicule. Duke McQueen, the little green man, ex Air Force man, opens repair shop in Vermont. Wife stands by, disgraced former pilot. Like, just all these like t- things in like, to yeah. imagine like dude this is like 40 years 40 years of him dealing with like people not believing him yeah. telling him he's crazy like what does that do to the psyche of somebody you know yeah. so like and very alienating you know like he's like a very lon- lonely person and his kids don't want really anything to do with him and what happens dude i love this i love these pages dude you see like the, the way image the, of the rain the rain yeah right the here. Parking device yeah amazing, dude. dude yeah and then the ship you know like that's what a great we talked about this miller does great last pages and that's yeah like just seeing the ship in the rain and all he says is i love got, the, thing, the little signature box too with mark millar and gordon parlot like you know they're, yeah. they're, this is a very like slick classy looking book at the same time you know like it, it's it's just very, very clean looking. Despite like kind of a sad story, it's kind of an optimistic story, I think. And like mm-hmm. a story about hope, which I think, again, a lot of people criticize Mark Millar because like his stories can be like nihilistic and, uh, and um, what's the other word? A, a, a little bit um, like darker, but like to me, this is like one that's very hopeful, you know? I guess they could say it's darker, but he has like a, a really dark sense of humor too in there. So it's like, yeah. even though they are maybe dark themed, like there is humor to everything yes. he does. But uh, you know, this even little... here, you know, lots of one liners. Like, mm-hmm. and this kid comes right, like comes to grab him. Chris Moore is his name. And he traveled across halfway across the universe to see him, and he wants to bring him back because they need his help. And he doesn't want to go, and he like doesn't know what's in it. He's like, he convinces him. He's like, yeah, the the world. He's like, I already saved your world. And like, yeah, but now they've taken over, you know, since you've been gone. And so they convince him to fucking go back. I love how he puts on the spacesuit. I love that particular. Yeah. Bit. And then he's like feeling his tummy, you know, a little tight around the waist. Yeah. I-, I can relate. Yeah. I can relate. You and I were talking about that. Yeah. <laughs> we, we were right before we started. Recording. Yeah. We, yeah. That was literally us. Man. That's funny. Yeah. yeah. That's kind of funny because I wasn't even thinking about the book when we were saying Me that. neither. But, yeah. Yeah. So I love it. He gets in the ship and he's like, are all the controls the same? Like I, because he knows how to fly these ships. He's like, well, yeah, you know, I just I wanted to bring an old school one. You know, feel a little classic. It's a vintage, yeah. It's like if he came in like a like a seventies muscle car or something, you know. Yeah, and I, you know, you go back, dude. I love this too. Look at this double page spread of them coming back to the planet, and it just looks like a like a, a planet that's all resources have been bled dry. It's not this beautiful city anymore. That yeah, it's a direct contrast to what we saw in the flashbacks. And then again, I love the the final page of that issue with like the real big extreme close up of Duke's face and like the classic space helmet. Yeah, so good. And then this villain, you know, we got the villain Lord Kingfisher. Yeah, um, great man. character design too, man. Like this is like like again, I this, there's like a heavy Mobius like uh like influence to this. Yeah, it does feel like this could have been like in he- an issue of heavy metal, serialized yeah. in heavy metal for sure. I mean, right down to like the stylistic design of the characters and like the the layouts, like the whole feel, like this, you know, like the coloring I think Mark is, someone, is really good. Yes, one hundred percent the coloring. I think Mark is a, a one of the best people that knows how to pair the right story with the right 
artist. I mean, he he's a fucking genius at that. If you ask me, like he just he loves comics so much. He knows artists so well that he and like I mean, clearly you see how this feels perfect. I mean, that's another thing that I wanted to point out is that like his choice of the artist was like fantastic. You know, like every one of his series is is so well put together. And it's funny too because like he's like it, it's such a contrast. You know, like he's looked at this like savior, this like this kind of like almost like this godlike figure right to this whole yeah. planet for he saving says a them. Of him in the middle of the city you know <laughs> yeah, like, yeah but it, it, it's the complete opposite on his home planet so it's just so funny and then they're you know like they're in the middle he stops this like these guards from beating this person and they're like they're asking like well who the fuck are who the hell are you dude to tell us what it is like who am i that's who i am and he just fucking points to the statue behind him i fucking i love that panel dude Hold yeah on. that one right there yeah, it's a good one with the statue. I also love the design of Space Boy. Like, there's like an anime kind of like vibe to him with the hair and like the bigger eyes. And I love when yeah, we this... meet this dude who, whatever, spoiler, he ends up being a fucking spy, but he's like dressed in like this like 50s type of fucking, uh, forgot, like a greaser. Yeah, he looks like the fucking Fonz or something, you know? Yeah, like... he's like a greaser, dude. And he's like talking about stuff, asking him questions about what's going on on Earth. And he's like, have you heard how Tom and Nicole are getting on? <laughs> it's just so stupid. It's like, what a fucking pop culture reference, you know, that's definitely dated at this point. It's you know? dated now. It was like, it's still dated then, which is the fucking joke, you know? Yeah, like, yeah. But it, it worked because, like, I could see that and I could see, like, a, a, an alien race that is trying, you know, like, like considering that he's a spy, I, I mean, they would probably make that kind of an assumption, like, oh, these people still care about this, you know what I mean? Uh -huh. Like, like, that's what you said. Yeah, there are moments of humor and levity throughout all of his work, and this one especially. Yeah, and you, you know, like he's now branded a terrorist. He's put on all the fucking news channels, and you know, we see yeah. this this character. She comes into play, and she is um, leading this like revolution, this like you know, resistance group. But yeah, I just think that you're right. The designs of this are, I think, it's just such a sleek style. It's not overly yeah. designed. Um, no, and it, slick is the right word. Yeah, yeah, and, and it, just, it has a retro vibe, which you want something like this to have too. And I love this like Tilda Star character that like teams up with him, and they bring him into the mix. And like this scene when they go to the kingdom of of wood giants. Yes, like, and then they it, got the corpses lying there. Oh, dude, it's so good. And I, I love the 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 little backstory we're getting with Space Boy and like the person that killed his parents and like how he's going to be, be able to execute his revenge on 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 the individual like i love the moment when uh he gets his sword back too yes very cinematic too this is a very cinematic story i can't wait to see this thing brought yeah to yeah life, you know same dude i don't even know who who the who's playing who you know like but or you know what the cast is or if there's anybody known like i haven't really looked up too much on it but when we interviewed mark he did say that this was one of the properties netflix is doing yeah, and then here's that moment that I was talking about with his wife, you know, where he's she's like, yeah, you know, they're just kids. They'll understand when they're older. He's like, do you believe me, Joe? Do you ever have any doubts? And she says, never. And you can feel I mean, that she his face, it. His face does seem like it's hard to read his face, but it could seem like he could be like, well, you know, yeah, you're right. It's a little ambiguous. I didn't read it the way that at first time, but like someone who loves someone would do that to appease their feelings, you know? Yeah. But yeah, dude, it's like, I'm just flipping through it again because it's been a couple of weeks since I read it because we had to reschedule. Um, but it is it, this story was already kind of embedded in my brain long yeah. before it had. I only this is only the second time I've read this, but it's like it really stuck with me for all these years, you know. Yeah, and I just I had forgot how great it was. Remember, I think I told you that as soon as I was like, I forgot, like because I had read it in single issues too, and yeah, I, I just went ahead and 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 grab the digital copy because i didn't want to go through my boxes and find because i have i have all five issues somewhere um but dude i mean it it's it's great definitely up there with all the mark millar um uh, you know uh stories and i mean that's no easy feat because he has so much great stuff i know this and this is the one that seems like it would be one you could do a sequel or a prequel to you know? Yeah, yeah, and so you can actually so, show the actual story. Yeah, yeah, because it does it does end in a way that is it you know nice little bow, and mm -hmm. it, it wraps it up very nicely. But there is room to play in this world, you know, that you could I don't maybe not a sequel, but 
but he could do a prequel to this. You know, yeah, like, like you could show more about him when he came back. You know, yeah. like like what the you know, but but even even if they they just leave it as this, it's fine. I mean, it's mm-hmm. a great comic. The fact that it's being made into a, a show is gonna probably make the comic book a little bit more evergreen too. Yeah, and uh, you know, it's a it's a great comic. Again, we keep talking about like how people might want to get into comics, but they might be feeling oversaturated by superheroes, or they want an alternative to superheroes, like. Here's another genre in comics that's fantastic. You got like the like the the space serial, you know, and Mark yeah. Millard does it well. You know what I mean? He's he he's great. Uh, and this is a, it's like it, it's like you said, one of those retro sci-fi concepts, but it also feels modern in its execution. So he he's great at at doing that as well. Like like giving it the modern flourishes it needs to 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 make it seem like like a product of now, but still rooting it in that classic like genre trope for lack of a better word it's it's one of the one of the books that shows you all the best qualities of mark millar the ability to connect with a great artist great pacing like we've always said he knows how to end an issue like his narrative pacing is unparalleled you know like it's fantastic and i mean i you will read this in one sitting because i practically did like i didn't want to stop yeah i read it in one sitting i mean yeah and i mean there's just so much like and it reads quick and but not like so quick that you feel like you're gonna waste time on it or you wasted your money because you read it in like two minutes no it reads quick because the pacing is so good and the story is so like like full throttle you know it's lots of action lots of great little humor moments i love that he's driving a mustang at one point in here like why would they have this mustang there but and then he does this call to action where he tells the people of tantalus that's just the plan that i need your help and they all i love when he like gets out of the mustang he fucking lights up this cigar you know yeah. just like just so cocky dude like it's 40 years yeah. 40 years have passed and he still has the balls to just like not give a shit you know i love that there's something there's something to be said about that with his character and to show that you know like even through all of what he dealt with people not believing him people thinking he was the liar and stuff and to be able to come back and like jump right back into it dude and save this planet yet again i love this line like we're you know, throughout the story, the the palace that the um, the evil dictator is in is called like the the castle with no doors, I think, or the palace with no doors. And then, like, mm-hmm. when he lights up the cigarette, Duke's like starting to wish you'd stuck a few doors on this place, huh? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. like it's such great one liners, man. Like again, and like the the cigar is uh, such a great touch. And then you get that beautiful page of like the crowd just swarming on everybody. No, the it's... climax is great, man. Like it's it's got like so many things going on so many like pieces coming together to execute this great action scene yeah and again they want him to be king you know like it's yeah it's ending the same way his time on the planet ended last time and he said no you'll be in good hands you got a queen right here and i love the way the villain dies like he's been collecting the swords of everyone who tried to like rebel against yeah. him on the roof and duke just shoots that shit and it fucking falls on him you know like no it's it's fucking it was a dope ending and i love too like as it wraps up when he's you know when he's gonna leave he's like i need some evidence this time i need i need something to show people so they believe me but i love instead of that what the kid decides to do with him and that's flying the ship for everybody to fucking see he landed on the fucking white house well yeah. you yeah. know like yeah. he fl- also he flies by his kid's office and he waves yeah he waves at them yeah yeah it's awesome it's such a great ending and you know like it's it's nice to you know like for him as a character for Duke McQueen he all these years he's dealt with like I don't I I'm I'm just assuming like not low self esteem but like man like nobody believes me you know and just yeah. being to the point where you wonder like something like that would maybe even make you self doubt was I delusional you know what I mean like did I have a psychotic episode? but then he gets I mean, his family like, back which is a great yeah. a great moment for the end of the book his kids finally believe him and now it's like the t- i love that you know the ending is a uh, the sign for the town it says home yeah. of duke mcqueen so now he's not like he's revered as a hero so you know again like you said it ends with a nice bow like you know it, it makes you feel like nice at the end of it it's it's just it's a great story a great experience Mark Millar has written so many things that have like really permeated the popular culture that a lot of great stuff that he's written too falls through the cracks because like you said at the beginning of the video not a lot of people talk about this title but it is up there with the rest of his work as fantastic and uh, it should be uh if you're a mark millar fan this needs to be in your boxes and in your shelves man it's it's a great book it is a fantastic book it's in print like i mean most of the stuff 
that he's done, I think, stays in print. I, I don't think yeah. it ever really goes out. And it will be, in, now that it's all, you know, part of Netflix and, like, you know, they're coming out with these properties, you know damn well. And they're still going to be printed to image. So, like, you know, it, the, the trades are fairly affordable. Image is great at, at, at like, keeping your stuff like, at a good price. So it's a no-brainer, man. You're going to get a lot of good comics. I think it's a fantastic story, one that I probably will revisit throughout the years. Like now that I revisited this second time and remembered how much I liked it, it it'll be one of my constant rotations. Hey, let me let me read Starlight. I haven't read it in a while. Yeah, because it's and that's the thing about Mark Miller stuff is that the, yes, the you read it fast, but it is something that like because you can read it fast and it's it feels almost like a nice little chunk of time. It's like not like you said, you're not reading it so fast that you feel like you didn't get your money's worth. I mean, somebody told me the other day, like comic books are meant to be they're meant to be fucking consumed quick They're, you know like yeah you don't want to be spending too much time you read it that first time fast and then maybe on the second read you kind of look more at, at the little That's details with most comics you know like like i'll read it fast and then like usually when i'm done reading i go back to the beginning and kind of flip through the pages again to sort of like you know now that i've read the story i can sort of absorb like the the actual layout and structure more you know yeah but his comics like like you know they they, they transcend that like you just want to you just read them again because like they're so captivating and you know again i i, I always reread mark millar's stuff and this is just one that i had forgotten about and like now i want to make sure i don't and i want to make sure nobody else does because it's great yeah so i yeah if you haven't read it go pick it up we're going to be doing some more videos um focus on uh you know mark the the miller world stuff leading up yeah. to big game which um is good well it's june now that's the day we're recording so Next month is when that drops, so I want to try to get a couple of these, you know, posted beforehand. But uh, yeah, we should be talking to Mark again when it comes out. Cause... Yeah, after issue one, I think he said he'd be down to talk. So hopefully yeah. we'll have him back on. And um, yeah, go pick up the book and make sure you follow us. Links are down below. And hit the subscribe button and the bell icon every. <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> hit the subscribe button and the bell icon so you're notified every time a new vid drops. And on that note, we're out. See you next time, guys.